Math is everywhere. Here we have CP24's five-day weather forecast, and this is an example of the addition and subtraction of positive and negative integers in a real-life context. Uh, if we look at um, Saturday's temperature of 4 degrees Celsius, okay, that's above zero. On Sunday, it gets warmer. Okay, so obviously the temperature has gone up positive 5 degrees Celsius. That's the difference between 4 and 9. There's a difference of 5. Temperature has gone up positive 5. So 4 plus 5 is 9. You could also say 4 take away negative 5 degrees of cold also brings the temperature up to 9. Now from Sunday to Monday, the temperature has dropped considerably. So from 9 down to 0, that's a negative 9. And then from 0 down to negative 8, you've got a negative 8. Negative 9 plus a negative 8 is negative 17. That's what the difference is between Sunday's temperature and Monday's temperature. There's a difference of negative 17 degrees. 9 plus a negative 17 brings the temperature down to negative 8. You could also say 9 take away 17 brings the temperature down to negative 8. On Tuesday, it's still cold, but not as cold as it was on Monday. So what has happened here is the temperature has gone up positive 2. So negative 8 plus a positive 2 brings the temperature up to negative 6, which is not as cold as negative 8. You could also say negative 8 take away negative 2 degrees of cold will also bring the temperature up to negative 6. Now, on Wednesday, Wednesday seems to be the coldest day of the week, you can see, temperatures drop down to negative 11. So negative 6 plus negative 5 of cold will equal negative 11. It's gotten colder. You could also say negative 6, take away positive 5 degrees of Mr. Sunshine will also bring the temperature down to negative 11. So here again is a real-life example of math in a real-world context involving the addition and subtraction of positive and negative integers. Math is everywhere, even when you're looking at this recipe for chocolate chip cookies. Because what you're using is volume to measure your ingredients you need for this recipe. Looking at this recipe, you can see that you need two cups of flour. Using this measuring cup, you can see that up to this line, it's one cup of flour. So you, so you measure it two times. If you do not measure your ingredients correctly, your recipe will go wrong. Math is everywhere. Math is everywhere. Today I conducted a survey on the most popular music genres in my grade 7 class. I can tell that pop is the most popular and country is the least favorite because 3 out of 25 or 12 percent of the grade 7 kids like country and 10 out of 25 or 40 percent of grade 7 kids like pop. This is my graph on how math is everywhere. Math is everywhere. Here we have an example of my class to determine the top five sports that my classmates participate in. I can tell from the chart that more people participate in swimming than any other sport. I also know, notice that in my class there are not a lot of people par that not a lot of people participate in dance. This pie chart also teaches you fractions. One third participated in swimming and a quarter participated in dance. Math is everywhere. Life math, and I'm John Carlo, and we're doing measurement. And I'm going to figure out the surface area of St. Simon Portable 4. So on this wall, it's 27 and a half feet. And this wall, it's 21 and a half feet. This wall is 4 feet. This wall is 21 feet. This wall is 32 and a half feet. And this wall is 23 and a half feet. So first, we're, what we need to know is that each tile is a 12 by 12, which equals one foot, um, one squared foot. And then e each box of tiles contains 11 tiles that are one foot.
So, what we have to figure out here is the area, the surface area of the room. So, I broke it up into a rectangle and a square to make it easier to calculate the surface area. So first, for the rectangle, I did 21 feet, feet um, times 4 feet equals 84 feet squared. And then for the square, I did 27 and a half feet times 23 and a half feet, which equals 646 feet. So then I added the two totals from the rectangle and the square. So um, 84 feet plus 646 feet equals 730 feet, so approximately 700 feet. So now we come over here and we figure out that each tile is worth one foot. So um, to figure out how many tiles we need, since it's 700 square feet, <laughs> we times it by 700. So we figured out that we need 700 tiles. Now we have to figure out how many boxes we approximately need to buy to cover the surface area um, of the portable. So 11 times 64 equals 700 square feet approximately. So um, for surface area covered. So now, so that gives us a, a six, one box times 64. So 64 boxes of 12 by 12 tiles is what we need to cover the surface area of portable four. And that is real life math. Yay. Nicholas, I'm going to show you a video on data management. So in data management, we're doing uh, a hockey player. And the specific hockey player is Jonathan Bernier. He's the goaltender for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and um, I'm going to compare his save percentage over the last six games. So for you people that don't know what save percentage is, it's goals compared to saves in a game. So I'm going to just scroll down, and then I'm going to show you guys the last six games. So here, January 2nd, against Minnesota, we have an 897 save percentage. So I'm going to compare 897 to 893. So if you subtract 893 from 897, you get 4. So his save percentage went down by 4%. So now, next, I'm going to compare um, the 893 save percentage to the 1000 save percentage against Dallas. So. Here you can see 893 is lower than 1,000. So if you subtract uh, 893 from 1,000, you get 107. So his save percentage went up by um, 107. And now I'm going to compare the Dallas game where he had a uh, shutout to the uh, Philadelphia game. So in the Philadelphia game now, he had an 829 save percentage. So if you subtract 829 from 1,000, you get 171. So his save percentage went down by 171%. Now I'm going to compare the Philadelphia game to the Carolina game. So. <clears throat> In the Carolina game, he had a 917 save percentage. So if you subtract 829 from 917, you get 88. So 88, it, um, his save percentage went up by 88%. So now, finally, we have the Carolina game compared to the Anaheim game. So uh, against Anaheim, he had a 952 save percentage. So if you subtract 917 from 952, you get uh, 35%. So his save percentage went up by 35%. Thanks for watching. I just proved how math is used in real life. Real life math by Lucas. So today we have a rate comparison between, um, rates is a comparison between liters liters of gas and the cost of money so today we have um um we're comparing liters of gas price in toronto and new york so in toronto a liter of gas today is 95 cents a liter and in new york a gallon of um of gas is two dollars and ten cents and we can if we convert that it will be a liter of gas will be 65 cents and 65 
dollars. Canadian dollar. So here we have a difference. So here we did the difference between um um gas price in Toronto and New York. And the difference between them it would be thirty cents. Because um the gas price in Toronto is higher and mm, New York slower. So um thanks for watching and map is everywhere. My math is everywhere. I'm doing it on rates. And this is um electric cars. This is the Tesla. And it's hundred percent charged, which means hundred percent electric. It goes two hundred and sixty five miles, four hundred and twenty six kilometers. The starting price for the Tesla is one hundred and one thousand five hundred dollars for this Tesla, which is a lot. Um, this is the Nissan Leaf, which is 100% charged. It goes 75 miles, 121 kilometers range. It's, this is the basic model starting price. It's 31798000 So obviously this one is less than the Tesla because the Tesla can go farther. So it doesn't go as half as that one does, but the Tesla costs more. So now I'm going to show you the i3 BMW which is also 100% charged, which is 81 miles, 130 kilometers range. The starting price is $42,300, which also doesn't go as close as the Tesla, but it's still good. So the best car you probably would want to go with is the Tesla if you want to go somewhere far without charging it again, but it costs more than the other ones. So this is my, this is math is everywhere. Oh, math is everywhere. And for my example of math, I'm doing um, garden because if you have a five meter by a 10 meter garden and if the, your, your plants are gonna be 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters, you need to figure out how much plants you can fit on both sides to reach the maximum length. So, the, you need to calculate how many this is. So change this um, five meters into 50, 500 centi centimeters. So calculate the amount you have to divide. So 50 centimeters divided by 500 centimeters is 10 centimeters. Is, is 10. Which means you could fit 10 parsley plants on this side. And because this is dub five, double is ten. So all you have to do really is double. All you have to do really is double this half, the, the, um, this part, into a thousand. Because a thousand, it, it would be a thousand. And this divide, doubled is, if you change that into centimeters, that will be that doubled. And because you double that, you have to double the answer. And if you double the answer, it will become 20. And because now it is 20, that is how much you can fit 30 plants on both sides. There's so 30 this way, 30 that way. Matt, that's an example of math in the real world. Math is everywhere. My strand is probability. My specific concept is expressing a fraction as a percent. And my real life examples are cars on certain freeways. And the freeways that are included in this are the 401, the 400, the 407, and the Gardiner Expressway. So for the 401, 30% of cars go on this freeway, which in the fraction form is 30 over 100 or 3 out of 10. On the Gardner Expressway, also 30% of cars drive on this freeway, which is 30 out of 100 or 3 out of 10 again. The, 
The percentage of cars going on Highway 400 is 25% of the cars on all these freeways, which is a frac which in fractions is 25 out of 100 or 2.5 out of 10. Fi finally, for the last freeway, 15% cars go on this freeway, which is a 407 which is 15 out of 100 or 1.5 out of 10. I'll show you how math is everywhere. I'll be showing the stats of Lou Williams from the Toronto Raptors. I'll be showing his last two games first facing Denver Nuggets and LA Clippers. In the game against Denver Nuggets, he had 34 minutes, 31 points, and five rebounds. In his game against LA Clippers, he had 29 minutes, nine points, and no rebounds. As you can see, in his game against Denver, he had five more points than he did with LA Clippers. He had 22 more points in the game with Denver, and five more rebounds. And that's how we use data management to compare game stats in real life. is everywhere. I notice people are developing a screen time addiction. They can't live without their smartphones. I collect some data from my classmates and crunch the numbers. Here are my results. Use of smartphone. Texting, 30%. Listening to music is 20%. Checking email, 8%. Sharing, sharing selfies, 5%. Playing video games, 10%. Watching YouTube, 12%. FaceTiming friends, 9%, Google search, 5%, and making actual phone calls, 1%. I've noticed we don't use our phones to make phone calls anymore. We tend to use more apps. Times have changed. Math is everywhere, even when you're looking at the fuel economy of three different cars, because what you're using are rates. You are comparing liters of gas to traveling distance in kilometers. So you're comparing two different units, liters to kilometers. So the Toyota Corolla 2015 model consumes 7.3 liters of gas per every 100 kilometers traveled in both the city and highway. The new Honda Civic uses 7.6 liters of gas per every 100 kilometers traveled and the new Mazda 3 consumes 8.1 liters of gas per every 100 kilometers traveled. So we can see that among the three, they're all fuel efficient cars, but among the three, the Toyota Corolla is the most fuel efficient and the Mazda 3 is least fuel efficient. But either way, they're all very close. They're all going to get you very, very far especially now that our gas prices here in Toronto have dropped down to about 95 cents per liter. Math is everywhere. Hey guys, so today I'll be showing you different sales at different stores but on the same item. I may sound confusing now, but as I'm explaining it, you'll understand. So as you can see here, Uggs were on sale for 15% off at Ugg Australia in Bun Mills. And then the same Uggs were on sale for at Ugg Australia for 25% off, but at Sherway Gardens. And between that, there's 10% difference on sale. Um, and so basically what I'm trying to do is I'm just comparing sale prices. And so let's do another example. At Future Shop, an iPad mini is 10% off. And that's at the Crossroads Future Shop. And then the iPad mini was 24% off at the Future Shop at Young & Finch. Um, thank you guys for watching. And as you can see, math is everywhere. And I was just comparing the price of the sales. As you can see, it was 10% um, different here and then 6% different there. There. Thanks guys for watching. Bye. So, um, this is Vincent and I'm going to show you how math is applied in the real life. I'm doing numeracy but my specific topic is integers. I'm, I'm going to compare the win percentages of two teams, two hockey teams, Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens. So Montreal Canadiens. Montreal played 40 games and 26 wins. 12 losses and 2 overtime losses to figure, 
about the winning percentages, I have to divide 40 from 26, and the answer is 65%. So, Toronto Maple Leafs. The Leafs played 40 games, 21 wins, 16 loss, 3 to overtime losses. To, so, I have to do the same thing that I did. So, I have to divide 21 by 40, and the answer is 52.5%. To com so now I have to compare both of the team. I mean, to compare, I have to subtract it. So to compare the two team percentages, I have to subtract them both. So 65 subtract 52.5 equals 12.5 um per win like percent. So the Montreal ca um Canadians have a better winning percentage by 12 percent. So that mean that probably means they're a better team. So um this is um math in real life math is everywhere here we have a basketball coach rated each player so we're using positive and negative integers jane scored negative two Daniel scored positive 3. So the difference between Jane and Daniel is 5. Next we have Tony. Tony scored positive 3. The difference between Daniel and Tony is nothing because they scored the same. Next we have Monica. Monica scored negative one. The difference between Tony and Monica is four. Next we have Arvin. Arvin scored positive four. The difference between Monica and Arvin is positive five. The next one we have Maria. Maria scored positive three. The difference between Arvin and Mon Maria is 1. Next we have Barbara. Barbara scored positive 4. The difference between Maria and Barbara is 1. Next we have Ricky. Ricky scored negative 2. The difference between Barbara and Ricky is 6. Math is everywhere. Math is everywhere. In this example, we will be taking measurement and surface area and applying it into real life. In this example, we will be using an eight square an eight square feet by four square feet bathroom. To calculate the total area of this bathroom, you will need to do eight square feet divided by four square feet, and it'll give you thirty-two square feet. One tile costs 69 cents and one pack of tiles comes with 18 tiles. So you'll have to do 69 cents divided by 18 and it will give you $12.42. 18 tiles is not enough to cover 32 square feet so you'll do 18 plus another 18 and it will give you 36 square feet. 36 square feet. 36 square feet is just enough to cover 32 square feet. Therefore, you will need to you will need two packs of tiles to cover 32 square feet and the total price will be $24.42. Cement needed for this project. One can of cement is 3.75 liters divided by 32 square feet and it'll give you 11.72 square feet. 11.72 square feet is not enough to cover 32 square feet, so you'll add 11.72 square feet three times, and it'll give you 35.16 square feet. Therefore, you will need 
three cans of cement because 35.16 square feet is just enough to cover 32 square feet. Math is everywhere. Here I'm going to be showing you an example of real life rates. Erica is having a party. She goes to Tim Hortons to buy donuts. She needs to buy 16 boxes. How many donuts will be in the box? So one box co contains 12 donuts. So that is equivalent to 16 boxes and 192 donuts. So the way I got the an that answer is one box times 16 equals 16 boxes. So what we do have to do to the top, we have to do this to the same at the bottom. So 12 donuts times 16 equals 192 donuts. So therefore, Erica will have 192 donuts in the box. Math is everywhere. Math can be in recipes. I am making a mug cake. I will be using a tablespoon a teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon. To make this, I need three tablespoons of flour, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of cocoa, and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. For liquid, I need Three tablespoons of milk, one tablespoon of oil, and a drop of vanilla. Finally, I will add two tablespoons of chocolate chips. Mix until combined. Microwave for 50 seconds. But because, but because we have to speed this up, and thanks to the magic of YouTube, we have one pre-made. Math is everywhere. Math is everywhere. Today, I conducted a pie graph that shows the breakdown of favorite clothing stores. Aritzia was most popular with 35%, compared to Justice and Ardeen with 10%. So, it was it was twenty five percent more than Justice and Ardeen. Hi everyone! Do you know what you're looking at right now? Today, I will talk about real life math. For example, buying meat. It is usually sold by weight. So, if you buy one pound, it would cost you $3.99. And if you wanted to buy 10 pounds, then you would multiply $3.99 by 10, and you would get $39.90. That's a lot of meat. So, in this example, one pound of meat, $3.99, is equivalent to 10 pounds of meat, $39.90. So this equation is called rates. We use math everywhere in all your everyday shopping, 
buying fruit, buying lots of things. So thank you for listening, everyone. Bye. Math is everywhere, even in art. We design a window to show our perspective indoors versus outdoors. The window has to be measured accurately so it's symmetrical, balanced on both sides. It is made up out of four rectangles. The top of the window is like a protractor from 0 to 180 degrees. It has a 90 degree angle and two 45 degree angles. The window ledge is like a trapezoid. Math is everywhere. Math is everywhere. I compared the international prices of M&M's Curtain Call CD sold on eBay and learned that there are so many price differences from country to country. For example, Australia, it calls $10.14 US dollars. Belgium, it costs $6.50 US dollars. Canada, it costs $5.50 US dollars. United Kingdom, it costs $4.42 US dollars. Obviously, I would have to add shipping rate from each location to calculate which is least or most expensive to buy. Do your homework before you click add to cart next time you do online shopping. Math is everywhere, even when you buy something online. I compared the One Direction Midnight Memory CD sold on Amazon versus eBay and found that there was a price difference between both websites. On Amazon, the CD is offered for 19, 19 US dollars with free worldwide shipping, including the price. Other, whereas eBay, the, whereas on eBay, the CD is offered for fifteen dollars and thirty-two cents US dollars plus nine dollars and fifty-four shipping. Obviously, I would buy the CD on Amazon because it would because I would save five dollars and eighty-nine cents US dollars. Remember to do your math before buying online.